Welcome to Oregon Lifestyles. On this edition, we are visiting the north coast of Oregon, and this is Astoria, Oregon. We are going to stay at the Cannery Pier Hotel, which is a really cool hotel up on an old pier right in the water. We're going to go on a ecotourism tour with Columbia River Tours. We're going zip lining at High Life Adventures. We're going to take a helicopter out of Seaside. We're going to visit Golf Links Golf Course and McMiniman Sand Trap and Pub. We're gonna go down to the docks here in Astoria and we're going to go to a fish market called Northwest Wild Products. We're going to buy a piece of fresh salmon right here from the Columbia River with Chef Jason, who's going to prepare us a nice dish at the Bridgewater Bistro right here on Oregon Lifestyles. Hi, I'm Jason Lancaster and I am uh, the chef at the Bridgewater Bistro and I'm here over at Northwest Wild to get my fresh catch of the day. How are you? Good. All right. Now that we've got our fresh Columbia River salmon, we're going to head over to the restaurant and I'm going to prepare a lovely summery dish for you. All right, now we're back here at the restaurant and I'm here to uh, prepare your dish. Today I'm here, I'm going to prepare you a Columbia River fresh caught salmon with an heirloom tomato relish and a lemon risotto. I like to start off with a little bit of Himalayan sea salt, lightly dust the salmon, and some fresh cracked pepper. When I'm doing my risotto, I like to make a little compound butter, a little lemon, fresh herb to add to the butter to the risotto. I think it accentuates the fish, and it helps uh, give a little bit of kick to the heirloom tomato. We'll also, today I'll serve the vegetable is a baton fresh carrot. I like serving leather with risotto with this dish since it sort of counterbalances the lightness of the tomato and it helps give the fish a little bit of that lemon flavor that we all like. Start adding my butter. That is one of the best things about living out here in Astoria is we have the Columbia River right here and we get some of the freshest fish in the world. I also like to deglaze the carrots with a little bit of wine. And now at the end for the risotto, I'll add a little bit of Asiago cheese. Okay, so our salmon is uh, ready to go here on the grill. Again, I love risotto with this dish. It, uh, it adds, the, it gives the dish some substance, goes excellent with the salmon and it really complements the heirloom tomato relish. Now for our relish, fresh heirloom tomatoes, excellent product. And I've accentuated the relish with a little bit of cilantro, garlic, lemon oil. I try to get as much juice on the fish as I can. And lastly, cilantro infused extra virgin olive oil. And I like to garnish a little chai blossom. Okay, I'm here with Chef Jason Lancaster at the Bridgewater Bistro, and um, I know that you just picked up this fish fresh from Northwest Wild Products. And that's the beauty of being right here on the coast, is you can get the fresh fish. We're looking at the water, the beautiful Columbia River, and uh, I'm gonna try it. Get all the goodies. Mm. Mm. Cheers to you, Jason. That is lovely. <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, so one of the really cool things at the Cannery Pier Hotel is they have these really interesting vintage cars and uh, they take you uh, around Astoria if you need to go. And so we're doing something really fun tonight. We're going on an eco boat tour um, to cruise on the river for three hours and see some fabulous things. The Cannery Pier Hotel is so kind um, to bring a bottle of wine or non-alcoholic beverage and um, appetizers. So while we're up in this beautiful boat, we're up on the top and uh, we're about to take off. I'm very excited. Okay, I am here with Chris Lloyd and he is the captain and creator 
of Columbia River Eco Tours, and this is such a fun tour, Chris. I want to thank you so much. You're it's welcome. full of information about the barges about the history, about the fishing in this area. We are on a three hour tour. One of the best things that I like about this tour overall is um, what you see behind us is a working wharf. So we started out at a regular marina and then we get all the way back up into the Lewis and Clark National Wildlife Refuge. You see eagles, you see osprey, we saw the um, sea lions and all that and then you get back in here to the working wharf. Um, this is where they unload the fish in here and then I'm going to take this uh, boatload of folks um, around the corner and we're going to look at where they have um, some oil cleanup vessels and where they're loading um, timber on board ships right now bound for South Korea. So in three hours you know you get the city, you get the national refuge um, and then you get to see a working wharf so it's just really cool. And that's Columbia River Eco Tours. And I'm Christopher Floyd. See ya. I am here at the Cannery Pier Hotel in beautiful Astoria, Oregon, and I'm with Don West, the general manager. I thank you so much for talking to me today. Welcome to the hotel. Um, the hotel opened in August of 2005, and prior to that, it was a, a vacant dock, very similar to what you see over there. This dock was rebuilt from the riverbed up, and from the riverbed down, it's still the original pilots. Now the original pilings were first sunk in 1897. We had to have each one individually tested and they all came back in pristine condition. Apparently where there's no air, there's no rot. So we were able to stub into the original pilings from the riverbed up, it's all brand new. The architecture is done specifically to resemble the original cannery that was here. Wow, this is an architectural wonder yes. just out on the pier. I have never stayed on a hotel on a pier before, so it's so interesting to open up the back door to the little balcony and you, you're right on the water and you can hear the water, see the water, the wildlife, the big ships going by. Yeah, the, the ship traffic is quite something and it's, it's interesting. We keep a room open all the time so that we can show guests who come in here and they they haven't seen a hotel set up like this and they, they don't really understand until we get them into a room and show them what it's about. But we'll, we'll take them, show them the room, show them that clawfoot tub that's in the room and that little window that looks out into the room and then out onto the, to the water. And I always tell the ladies especially, I say, imagine yourself sitting in the tub, sipping a glass of wine and looking out onto the water and you see one of the very large ships, 800 plus feet, crossing by. I always tell them, you make sure you wait. It's because the deckhands are looking back at you. <laughs> that makes them feel good. <laughs> Just kidding. Of course, In the tub. Can't see <laughs> no, but it's really interesting because it's all of a sudden you're sitting and you're looking out your window and it's as if a giant wall is going by and it's just this huge ship that's uh, transporting grain mostly, right? And they're from there's there's all different kinds. They have container ships, car carriers, all different kinds of uh, ship traffic that come in here. Grain is a big one. Uh, logs, still export logs. Um, this was a very fishing and logging area back in the day. Wow, and so that's what I was hearing on the boat. We were on the uh, Columbia River Eco Tour last night with oh. Chris and had a fabulous time. You guys supplied wine yep. and hors d'oeuvres and it was just a wonderful trip. You guys do some really nice things here at the Cannery Pier Hotel. We enjoyed your wine and cheese and salmon uh, last night. That was so lovely. And then your breakfast is a nice extended little breakfast with a beautiful view in the lobby here. Mm -hmm. um, we took the classic car. Um, oh, last okay. night, yeah. um, you guys have some beautiful classic cars. I've never been in a car without seatbelts, but if it's a classic car, <laughs> it's still legal. It's still legal, and it's pristine and beautiful. And we took, you know, we're driven to the boat, um, and then tonight we're taking it to Clemente's restaurant. Excellent. I notice you guys have a jacuzzi and a sauna and an exercise room, which is very helpful um, for all the food that we've been eating around here. But you do have a full spa, and you want people to be able to come and relax with that. Well, part of the part of the making this a destination is having that service available. To the guests. I mean, they, they drive down here from Portland, Eugene, Seattle, literally all over. And when they get here, they're looking to relax. And part of that relaxation can be a wonderful massage, can be a facial, and a number of other treatments that they do down there. They're 
These girls are fabulous and they do an excellent job. We do have several pet friendly rooms and they're, they're as much of a guest as anybody else. And I'm sure you saw the amenities we provide for the pets as well. My dog has never been so happy. <laughs> he has the best treats and a fluffy bed and there was even a toy. And I really wanted to thank you for being pet friendly because he is, he is my little co-producer and he does travel <laughs> with us for our television show. Um, so we will go out and enjoy. It's beautiful weather. It's spring. It's, I think, going to be 77 degrees today is what I You know, it's always like this down in Astoria. <laughs> Well, I love it. It's like being on the ocean, but not getting seasick. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and your staff is amazing and very helpful. Thank and you. I'm just having a great time here at the Cannery Pier Hotel. And I thank Excellent. you so much, Don, for being on Oregon Lifestyles. Oh, my pleasure. I love this classic car service at the Cannery Pier Hotel. So they are going to take me to Clemente's Seafood where we're going to have a wonderful meal. Would you like to take a tour on our way to dinner? Okay, well this is downtown Astoria and if you look around you can tell that most of the buildings reflect the 1920s era architecture. And the reason is because back in 1922 the city burnt to the ground and was rebuilt in 1923. Uh, one of the first buildings that they erected uh, was the Liberty Theater, which is um, it's an old uh, vaudeville house, silent movie theater. And its claim to fame is that uh, Clark Gable was one of its early uh, actors that performed on its stage. The Banker's Suite, uh, it's an old 1920s bank building, is now a Marie Antoinette's cupcake and espresso parlor. And if you go inside, it's like going into an old Tim Burton movie. Now up on the right here is the old John Jacob Astor Hotel. And if you had come here back in 1920, and you were looking to stay at the best hotel in town, this would have been the place, Gimri's. Shoes is celebrating its 120th year of being in business, which makes it the oldest shoe store west of the Mississippi River. And it's still run by the same family, the Gimri's. The Oregon Films Museum is located in the county jail, which was used in the movie The Goonies. Back in the heyday of the canneries, back in the late 1800s, Astoria was thought to be the most wickedest town on the west coast. When the cannery workers, the young Scandinavian guys, would get off work, they'd take their money and they'd come up to, to the red light district up on Bond Street. And, and here they would spend their money uh, visiting the so-called seamstresses. Uh, the, the ladies of the night uh, used the term seamstress when describing their business. We had more seamstresses in Astoria than per capita than any other city in the United States. Uh, on the right here, you can see those, those four doors are the old doors to the bordellos that those seamstresses worked in. This is old, what well, was old Fintown. Back in the 1870s, a lot of Finnish folk left Finland came to Astoria because of the opportunity to do what they were doing back in their home country, and that's to fish and to can fish. And they came and they settled in this neighborhood because of the cannery that was located where the Cannery Pier Hotel now is located. Well, that pretty much summarizes our tour. Uh, so if you're hungry, I, I'll get you to Clemente's. We have the creamsicle that is going Quite the martini. <laughs> mm. My goodness. That is my favorite martini ever. So I'm at Clemente's Fresh Regional Cuisine and Astoria, and I'm very excited because they have something on a menu I've never seen before besides this creamsicle martini, which is amazing. Um, is they have something called the chef's whim and that's like you order that and you don't even know what it's going to be It's like a surprise of ingredients that are fresh and local and so at this point of ordering I have no idea what it's gonna be, but I'm very excited to find out That's cool 
So um, this is amazing. This is a chef's whim, and we actually have Gordon, the chef here, Chef Gordon. And can you explain a little bit about what you put together here on this plate? Sure, I would be glad to. I uh, try to take some of the things that are both uh, uh, northwest and seasonal right now, and, and speak to the the uh, bounty of our of the springtime area, and also a couple of things that we just like to do. Um, I, as I mentioned, uh, the borrowed recipe from Hawaii, which is uh, poke, and I used uh, albacore tuna that we uh, catch right right here, well, about 60 miles offshore, and uh, I used some local produce here. This is uh, some shallot tops and uh, some chard and, and pepper with uh, sockeye salmon, and over here we have some of Willapa's finest, the steamer clams, and uh, the mussels are actually uh, ocean mussels from uh, from the rocks right out here, south about 10 miles. And the oysters with the yam fries, that's my favorite way to eat oysters when I'm not eating them on the half shell. Uh, just pan fried in, in a little cracker crumb. Well, I le the chef's whim thing, I think is the most fantastic idea. <laughs> and I'm really glad we took a chance on it. Thank you, Because it's enjoyed. beautiful. And there's a lot of much. food. You guys serve up a good meal. And I'm um, very excited to dig in. Enjoy. Thank you, Chef My Gordon. pleasure. Enjoy, thank you. <laughs> So one of the really cool things about staying at the Cannery Pier Hotel is there is a great boardwalk or you can trolley for a dollar um, and walk anywhere you want uh, to all the restaurants, shopping that you want in downtown, cute historical little Astoria. Um, and we're at Fort George Brewery where they brew their own beer and we are enjoying a pint. Welcome aboard the Astoria Riverfront Trolley. Nice. I am here on the Astoria Riverfront Trolley. I am with your Leonard Hansen. And um, this is such a great way for people to get around Astoria. This is a great introductory method of transportation. We kind of get a quick history of the local area and Astoria in particular and the waterfront. Because you guys give a little commentary as people are on the trolley. Yes, we do. The total trolley ride's about 45 minutes. And so we have our, our engineer, our trolley operator, and then we have a conductor who gives a, a verbal account of kind of the area's history and some of the waterfront uh, uh, attractions as we pass by. So and that's your job today once we pick up some passengers, because we just came out of the barn, which most people don't get to see because they're waiting on the side of the road at the trolley stops to be picked up. And so for 45 minutes, is that one way or is that a... Uh, that's a round trip. Okay, wow. I think it's really interesting that it's only, it's like a dollar to ride the trolley or two dollars for a day pass. You know, we are loving Astoria. There's so many things to do. If you're coming to Astoria, you better plan on staying for a while. This, these are definitely alive because they're so fresh, but if it's been a couple days and they squeeze your finger, and that's how you know if they're still alive. I am not doing that, Amanda. Okay, you don't have to. <laughs> Creepy little guys. Can I touch one? Yeah. Will it move? Yes. Oh, they're, they're, they're ah. And they're delicious. Have you ever ate one? No. And so besides being a fish market, you guys also serve some food here where people can sit on the dock and eat it. Uh-huh. All right, I'm going to give this a try. This is my first razor clam on the Oregon coast. Wow. Mmm. Oh, boy. You good? Oh, it's really yeah. good. I never get sick of those. Mmm. <laughs> That's a razor clam on a stick. So we're here with Amanda. Her and her husband, Ron, own this fish market. It's called Northwest Wild Products, and you guys are adjacent right here to the Cannery Pier Hotel, which is very lovely. And I noticed, besides all the fresh fish that you guys have coming in, I've been seeing fishermen coming in and bringing all kinds of fish to you over the last couple of days. Um, but you also have some really interesting exotic meats. Yes. That I thought was interesting. So you have like alligator, um, is it python? We have python, and that's not easy to get, right? No, you get it from all different places. Well, thank you, Amanda, yeah. for being on Oregon Lifestyle. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, you for the razor You're clam. Welcome. Clam on a stick, <laughs> clam on a stick. It's really yummy. I am with Jason Bangill here at Gearheart Golf Links. Can you kind of tell us where that's located for people who've never heard of Gearheart? Sure, Gearheart is right on the coast, 80 miles west of Portland just north of the town of Seaside, or to Seaside, and just south of Astoria. Cannon Beach is about 10 miles south of us, and we border Seaside. And you're right on the water here. Just over the sand dunes, yes, yeah, it's, it's right there. How long has this golf course been around? Yeah, 1892. 
um, the oldest golf course west of the Mississippi River. Yeah, and you guys have members, uh, and then you also are open to visitors to come Correct, and golf? Correct, yeah, open to the public. We have about 120, 130 annual members uh, who are a very hardy bunch, play here all the time. Uh, rain or shine, and, and uh, misconception, it doesn't rain here all the time. <laughs> we do have lots of sunny days, but we, in the winter it never really gets that cold. In the summer it never really gets that hot. So how many holes do you have on your course? 18 holes. The golf course is built on uh, right around 100 acres, uh, 18 holes, um, rolling link style golf with very fast greens, very small greens, which is a little bit unusual for links golf, but they are very small and that's part of the defense of the golf course. So we've got a wonderful practice putting green, a wonderful chipping green with a practice bunker and a practice field in between number one and number nine. And you have a beautiful pro shop, which is located in a beautiful building, which you guys share with McMinimins, Sand Trap and Pub. And Correct. so there's a hotel there. Um, people can eat there, have drinks. And you were telling me they have live entertainment. Um, you guys have some fire pits outside. So it's a really nice place to just relax, play some golf, don't play golf, whatever you're into, right? right? <laughs> yeah, it's hard not to have fun here. The, the um, the hotel has been open for a little over a year and it is the fourth reincarnation of the Gearhart Hotel. It was in the 1880s when the first one was built. Um, and then through the 1900s, I believe the last one was built in 1950 and torn down sometime in the 70s. I can't remember the exact date. Um, and then the Sand Trap restaurant, which stood on the site of the clubhouse now, that burned down in 1998 or 1999, which is when the current structure was built. And as you said, we shared the space with McMenamins. Uh, the Pot Bunker Bar, the Sand Trap Pub and Grill, and the Gearhart Hotel uh, occupy the space in, in addition to the Pro Shop. So how many rooms are in the hotel? Gearhart Hotel has 18 rooms, uh, 16 king rooms and two queens. And I noticed on the door there, there, there are names that I've not seen before, so every room has a theme or a name on a door. What is that? Right, each room is named after a chapter in a book called The Mystery of Golf. It's really fun. For people who don't are not familiar with McMinimins, um, they a lot of times are in refurbishing old buildings. Right. This is a little bit different, but it sure feels like it's been there for many, many years. It looks historical. And they take these buildings and they do pubs and restaurants and theaters. And uh, it's just a really fun way to go and visit different McMinimins all over. And the food is wonderful. I'm going to be checking that out very <laughs> soon here and maybe even a pint. And it's just, a, it's really fun to come out to Gear Heart and I look forward to exploring it a little bit more. And thank you so much, Jason. You bet. For My being pleasure. with us and showing us your beautiful golf course. Nice job. My pleasure. Thank you very much. I am here with Narayan, who is my zipline guide here at High Life Adventures. Uh, we are in Warrington, which is just out, which is just between Seaside and Astoria. All right, this is our fifth line. It's Hemlock. It's about 480 feet long. It's the highest one at 65 to 70 feet. Um, it's also our most romantic line. As you can see, we're going over a heart-shaped lake. Alright, so whenever you're ready, you could either step off, step down to that first level, and either one more, or just step off right there. That was our highest line at 65 feet. Okay, and what is this guy? This is Huckleberry. It's our second longest one at 930 feet. It's also the fastest one. This one's at a 4% grade, whereas all the other lines are at 3%. So this bad boy's kicking today. Okay, so um, I understand the zip line, it's possible to get a little bit or a lot wet or not wet at all. The range is from completely dry, completely sopping wet. I think we should go for whatever you think is best because I trust you as a guide. On this beautiful day? I know, it's warm enough. It you're getting to be... super soaked. <laughs> okay, let's do it. I'm not afraid. <laughs> Zipping maple super soaked. Perfect amount of stuff. Yes, thank 
We are standing on the biggest platform here at High Life Adventures, and I'm with Lancey, who is the owner. You and your husband have created this whole thing, and you just decided that there should be a zip line course here in exactly. Northwest. Yes. <laughs> Everybody's having so much fun. Uh, this is it's just so beautiful, and I wanted to thank you guys so much for having us out here and being on Oregon Lifestyles. Um, for people who've never zip lined before, it's really easy. You've got great guides, good equipment. It's fun. <laughs> All right, this is Spruce and Willow. It's our finale. Uh, it's a uh... race. Yeah. You're on. Me and you racing. I'm winning. Go! Oh! I am here at Seaside Helicopters and I'm here with Gary Terrell who is a pilot who is going to take us up and you give these helicopter tours year round. Now, people like to see the sweeping panoramic views of the coast from the air. It's a different vantage point, gives them a different impression in, in the big picture. We've had the heliport for, this is the 12th year that I've, I've been uh, running the heliport here. And you have a couple different pilots. Yes. Uh, uh, John Glenn has been working for me, retired Coast Guard uh, commander uh, for quite a few years and, and now coming on board, uh, Dan Leary. There's so many fun things to do on the North Coast and I can't wait to get in the helicopter, so let's do it. to go on a huge ride because within five minutes you've seen so much and uh, I'm just really really excited and I'm gonna just remember this my whole life thank you seaside helicopters <laughs> <laughs>